Lord, what fools these mortals be! Shall we their fond pageant see? Hi, I'm Julia Lupton, professor of English at UCI and co-director of UCI's New Swan Shakespeare Center. And I'm thrilled to be introducing the Irvine Barclay Theater's free streaming of A Midsummer Night's Dream, directed by Nicholas Heitner and coming to you just in time for the summer solstice. Every production of this play has an angle. Whose dream? Whose fantasy? In Julie Taymor's production, for example, the dream belongs to Puck. And when the play begins, we see him on a bed, which is gradually pushed up towards the heavens by the forest that grows beneath him. In Heitner's version, it's Hippolyta who is doing the dreaming. This is her play, her fantasy. As the audience gathers in their seats, we look at her displayed in a glass box. She is the queen of the Amazons, who has been conquered by Theseus, Duke of Athens. In Heitner's dystopian vision, Athens is a place where female sexuality has been harnessed for the ends of the state. The costume design may remind you of something as well. Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, which is an apt analogy for the kind of world that Heitner is building for us in this drama. Hippolyta is played by Gwendolyn Christie. If she looks familiar, that's because you may have seen her in The Game of Thrones, where she plays Ser Brian of Tarth. The associations are once again appropriate, since the Amazons in Shakespearean mythology were a tribe of heroic women warriors, and also the inspiration of the modern Wonder Woman. At the beginning of the play, Theseus has wooed Hippolyta with his sword. And now they have to get ready for a wedding and for marriage by changing the aggressive mood of their first encounters. And what allows for that change to occur is the dream that takes up the central acts of the play. In this version, it is Hippolyta's dream, and she is given the power to reimagine sexual and social relations, not just for her and Theseus, but for Athens as a whole. How does she do this? Well, she becomes Titania, queen of the fairies, following the doubling of parts that we see in many modern productions, and that Shakespeare might have done in his own production as well. You can see that Titania is going to have a lot of fun, and so are we. In a massive role reversal, Heitner gives Titania all of Oberon's lines. She's the one that gets to boss Puck around, and she's the one that gets to play a practical joke on her husband. So one thing to look for is how this simple change, or not so simple change, makes us re-encounter and rethink some of the key elements in the drama. And that's what I love about uh, seeing an inventive and creative new production like this one. I think I know the play inside out, but a, a director and his cast and the various references that he pulls together and that they collaborate on as co-creators of the dream allows me and us to rethink what we think the play is about. It's not only Hippolyta's dream. The young people are also transformed when they enter the forest. They enter thinking they know who they love and what love is, as young people tend to do. But by the time they leave, their attachments have been shaken up and rearranged like, like so much fairy dust. When they wake up, their view of love is more complex and more flexible. And I love that. I am super excited to get to watch Heitner's production through the special streaming arrangement between National Theatre Live and the Irvine Barclay Theatre. I hope you'll join me in your home so that we can watch it together. Thank you.